Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Mort, and he's got an interesting question that leads me to think that he is not quite yet a ham. Okay, and we, Mort, encourage you to go ahead and get your technician license and your general license and become active on the air. He says, I am in the process of set, getting my info together to set up a ham system for emergency commo when the SHTF. Now, I know what that means. Um, I will tell you that your best bet, get your ham license, get involved with your local amateur radio emergency service uh, chapter or uh, RACES. Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. Uh, sometimes it's called Auxiliary Communications. But these are organizations where hams pair with the disaster response officials at the county level in the U.S. This is all laid out in detail by the Department of Homeland Security. And local agencies are encouraged to use hams because hams are the people with interoperable equipment and can uh, be set up very quickly to help. It is true that when there is a disaster, the first communications into the disaster area is usually through ham radio. Now, I have seen too many people think they're going to set up their own little nets to do this. First of all, you have no idea whether those frequencies are already allocated for use in an emergency unless you get involved with one of these emergency organizations. Do so. Don't try and do stuff on your own because you're going to get swamped. If you try to uh, interrupt and become part of this in an unwanted fashion, um, you'll see the sheriff show up at your door very shortly uh, asking you to get off the air. And uh, there was a situation Oh, here in the last year where some ham wanted to help with, um, there was a fire suppression activity going on. And uh, he found out what their frequency was, got in on it, uh, to tell them something he thought they needed to know about the airport. Well, as it turned out, they already knew. Um, and he did get a visit from a sheriff and a hefty fine from the FCC for interfering with disaster communications. This idea that you can use any frequency in an emergency is true if the frequency or if the emergency involves immediate threat to life or significant property loss. By significant property loss, I mean homes or entire communities or something like that. However, these are designed for a one-time thing where you may be the only person there with that. Uh, they are very much frowned upon if you don't go through channels. I mean, very much to the point of, in some cases, being criminal. Okay, now, if there is a natural disaster, a uh, widespread natural disaster like the flooding the head in Vermont or something like that. You need to be working through your ARES or RACES or auxiliary communications or however it's spelled out in the county disaster plan. Now, if you'd like to communicate to other people, you know, other hams, sure, go ahead. Um, he says, I watched your video how to set up a ham radio station. And one question is, you use a Tentec Jupiter for your transceiver. I used to. It's sitting up on the shelf up there. Next to it is the next radio I bought, which was the ASU FTDX 3000, marvelous radio. And then when I set up the reference station, I went with the ICOM 7300. You too can take a look at the reference station by going to decastlercom slash reference. And there will you, you will find a list of all the things you need to set up a general station. I've provided specific equipment, specific equipment, models, and everything that you can use. Now, understand 
that you it's only a reference design. You refer to it. You may want to use a different radio. You may want to use a different antenna or whatever. I would not recommend getting the Tentec because it's um, over, well, it's about 25-year-old radio. And it does not have any of the latest uh, gadgets. It does have some noise reduction. Um, it's a nice radio. I've used it for I used it for years. For ten years, it was my primary radio. Okay. Um, source that you can purchase a transceiver used. I do not recommend used equipment for a ham operator's first radio, because in addition to dealing with the all the things about the radio, these are sometimes very non-intuitive to use. Uh, you may be dealing with somebody else's problems. For example, in my Tentec, sadly, a cat barfed all over the screen. And it got down inside and affected some of the switches. Now, I sent it back to Tentec to have it cleaned, which they did, but I still have trouble with those switches. Now, do you want to have that kind of a problem with the radio that otherwise works fine, but you've got to know its idiosyncrasies or get yourself some new gear? So, Mort, um, get your ham radio call sign and proudly uh, share it, and uh, you'll need a general class license to do the kinds of things you're talking about, and I think you can get there and really enjoy it. So... Um, again, uh, I kind of explained the reasons why I'm thinking it might not yet be a ham. Uh, understanding uh, the public nature of ham radio. And radio waves do not just go to the recipient. They go all over, around. Lots of other people can listen in to what you're doing. So there you have it. If you have listened this far in this video, you may be interested in subscribing to this channel. And uh, that tells YouTube you like the channel. And then if you want to click the notifications, you can get those too for new videos. We do three uh, videos in this format every week. We also do a live stream once a week. And we've got lots of great videos coming up. So until we next meet, 73.